this is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to uh, be removing the hook and uh, I think I'll disassemble it, disassemble the pieces and uh, put it back together and then put it back on the machine. Uh, this uh, 221 Singer Featherweight. Um, I, I think I see some thread back there and I know thread can get caught up behind the mechanism but I, since I got the machine I've also had this weird little uh, clicking or something hitting or bouncing. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I took off the needle plate, took off the feed dog, I reset the height of the feed dog and I've still got that. So I thought I, I want to get the hook uh, inspected and cleaned up and everything anyway. So we'll see if that has anything to do with this uh, noise that I'm kind of trying to track down. So I'm going to flip the machine over on its back so I can set up a camera and, and uh, look down here um, from above because this little space right here we need to get into and uh, remove a couple of set screws that hold the hub of the hook onto the hook drive shaft here. Then we should be able to just pull the, the hook right off. Haha. <laughs> so let me set up and we'll get started with uh, removing the hook. Okay, so I just I just have Lala set upside down on an upside down packing box. And uh, down in here you'll see the hub of the rotary hook. And you'll see a loop guard, and then on the other side of the loop guard is a uh, the uh, hook itself and the hook point. And there's uh, set screws. There's two set screws that go through the hub and up against the hook drive shaft. And that's what we want to be uh, taken out down there. And... Uh, so I'm going to loosen them and then uh, see if I can take them out with my spring driver without dropping them down in the box and so forth. But there we go. Just get it loose there and if you have a magnetized uh, screwdriver, I just have this little spring screwdriver. See if I can get it set in there. This came out pretty easy. Sometimes they're, uh, you know, they can be stuck in there. You can use a little penetrating oil. You can also heat it up with a hair dryer or a little bit with a heat gun. There's one of the set screws. So, and I'll rotate that hand wheel and turn the hook 180 degrees till I see the other set screw on the opposite side. Now these two screws are the only thing holding the hook on so when they're out the hook should s slide off of the hook drive shaft and uh, if it doesn't it, it, it's usually because there's just some old dried up oil in there. It's, you know that we've seen on other <clears throat> there we go that we've seen on other parts and it's really typical when you start working on a vintage machine so that's why I said you can get the oh look whoop that one came off easy <laughs> I went to take the other screwdriver out and it just slipped right off of the shaft okay let me find that on the floor okay. doesn't get any easier than that really you can see the set screw that's still in there. You know, I, I loosened it two or three good turns. And as, yeah, here's, a, here's thread. There's usually some thread in here. So I want to see if that's dirt and lint and stuff in here is causing some problem for me. Where's the uh, other one? So there's the one I took out with the spring screwdriver. And... Uh, well, I should, 
I should patent that move, huh? Like Andy's flying featherweight hook removal system. <laughs> okay, I'm going to reset back up here on the bench, and then we'll we'll take this uh, take this hook apart, see what's going on with it. Okay, there it is. There is the hook and the bobbin case base with the little uh, positioning finger and this part right here that swings down is called the gib or the jib depending how you want to pronounce it and this is the hub and back here is the thread loop guard and a bunch of uh, lint and some thread and things are stuck in there so I, I'm not sure why uh, I, I always take this off starting at the back it's been my um, practice I do start with the back here and take this one screw out and uh, I remove the other set screw now you can leave your set screws in if you like so you don't lose them but just turn them in enough that they won't block sliding this piece off okay because that's that's how there's one screw to kind of anchor it here and then it it slides right over the hub of the hook so we'll just be sliding it off of there little little small short screw and let's see if this will come up now here we go oh <laughs> jackpot <laughs> there's more in there than I thought I thought there's going to be a couple strands of this thread so this has not been uh, cleaned in a long time huh now I've heard that so much thread can get back in there that it just will jam the jam up the hook and and your whole machine or it can get slip inside uh, between the back of the hook or between the, th this piece back here and the bobbin case base and get in there and and jam up so glad we took a look at this I don't know if this is causing my weird noise up there but uh, we'll find out I guess I'll get this out of here and clean it so let's go ahead then and take off this uh, or open up at least this hook jib get this screw out here be careful with these screws because they're so they're very small and you know I don't think you're going to be able to replace them although the 221 is so popular maybe somebody's making these screws now usually on a vintage machine you have to go find somebody parting out a machine so this screw is, is about half the size of the one I took off the the back for the loop guard a little dinky okay now you you see where the end of that jib is down there that's where it's going to hinge but uh, don't come up here by the hook point and grab that jib try, try and come down here and push it out with your thumbnail it's very tempting to come up here to get more um, see this is so nasty it doesn't even want to swing out here it comes here it comes and remember it's going to hinge way way down here there we go okay Careful not to bend this when you're handling it. 
Now, if you look up, you can get a better view at the actual hook point of the rotary hook right there. See that? So if we come down here and turn this, if there's only one spot, I guess is the way to say that this hook base will come out of this assembly. You know, if, if you try and pull it out any place except that spot, it's not going to come out. And it's, it's down in this area here. Uh, let's see, if the hook point is up, you could say it's across from the hole for the jib screw, or it's about 8 o'clock, right? Some place in that area. And when it is in the right area, you should be able to pull it out, just like that. Now, in this case, there wasn't any thread back here. All the thread that we found was was back between the loop guard and and the back of the hook, so that's good. And you you can see that there is some uh, oil and grunge in these little teeth here, and uh, you can you can brush those out with a soft you know like with an old toothbrush and stuff. I'm going to soak them in the crud cutter for a little bit and soften all this stuff up. You can see what the inside, so to speak, of the hook looks like. And when you put that jib back up, you'll line up the hole, put in the screw, so if you just wanted to do this much, you know, uh, take out this jib screw and remove the hook, uh, uh, the bobbin case base, uh, I'd still consider taking it out and taking a look and inspecting everything. When you go to put it back, in case you're, you're done watching me here, uh, just take that position finger, right, and put it with, with the hook up. Point the finger at about eight, eight o'clock or so, and you want to tuck that. Whoops. Um, kind of set the the bottom of it in a little bit, and then lean the lean the top in. Then we'll be sure that we've got it set in there properly. If you don't have it in there properly, you could pull it back out in the wrong spot. So I think I've got it in the correct spot. It rotates freely. Now you would gently put this back and line up the two holes and put the screw back in. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, and remember when you when you open this and you close it, kind of go with this thicker part when you move it. Don't move this part up here because it's very easy to bend. So I'll move that down and I'll just rotate this and get it to the point where it comes out. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I'll close that up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop this. This is uh, about a 20-25% solution of the cleaner that I use. It's called the Crud Cutter Cleaner and Degreaser Stain Remover. I use that. If you've seen some of my videos, I wash the whole machine with, with that. And I'll put this part in, and I want to set this down in there. I'll just let it soak in there, I don't know, five minutes or so. And uh, we'll come back and pull it out and uh, dry it off and put it back together. Mm-hmm.
Okay. We can see the water is, or, or the solution, I guess, cleaning solution is is a little murky, a little dingy. I'm going to go ahead and pull these parts out now. They're soaking in there for a while. And usually, uh, these type of things, if they're, these weren't too bad. And uh, usually you can just soak them and uh, rinse them with water. And uh, everything will flush off of there. I'm going to go ahead a couple of spots here and just brush them with the toothbrush under that uh, jib there. Make sure that that stuff gets off of there. Let's take a look on the back side of this jib. And we'll uh, go through the hole here to make sure that gets clean and I'm just going to put them in the basket here and let's take a look at the bobbin case base take another look at these uh, little teeth they're kind of slots cut in here because definitely you can get the muck uh, crud built up in there. We want to get that out. See if I got a metal brush here maybe I'll make sure that that little detailed brush. Mm-hmm. I don't know, somebody told me that those are in there to cut the thread. I don't, I'm, I, and I, I really can't say that's true or not. I guess I was wondering why, why thread inside the bobbin case needs to be cut. But maybe that's a, something to try and keep the thread tangles from stopping the machine. I don't know. See, I got one more thing, the, the thread loop guard here. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so you can see how even the hook had that. Now what I do, I'm just going to take these to the sink and rinse the cleaning solution off with water. And then I'm just going to blow them dry with the... Uh, with the hair dryer and then we'll come back and put it back together. Okay, here we go. All my clean parts now. Mm-hmm. I guess let's put the uh, bobbin case base back in here. Putting the Positioning finger down around uh, 8 o'clock to get it back in side on the hook race, I guess is what I would call it. Right there. Get that open. Mm -hmm. Trying to do it through the camera here. See if I can get a better look at it for you. Should be right about there. Hmm. Oh no, it's so clean it won't go back together. Hmm. The problem is it's easy to get in at an angle or a slant and then it doesn't want to uh, travel smoothly in there. See that? See that movement? 
So I don't think I have it in there properly. Seems to me you put the put what I guess I'd call the bottom edge at this position down in first and then tilt the top in. Still doesn't want to go in there. Now when I did the video on the 301 hook, that's exactly what I did. This one I'm, I'm having a little bit of a hassle with. Just doesn't seem to want to fall back flat in there. There. So before I turn it, let's see where that is. Yeah, it's still 7 or 8 o'clock. Mm-hmm. I think I was up a little too close to 9. But now that it's in there, let's see if it will rotate good. Let's put the, let's put the jib, the hook jib back up here. I won't put the screw back in it, but let's just turn it here and see. Mm-hmm. Because it's going to be stationary with that positioning finger up, and the hook's going to rotate like that. So it feels good and smooth. Okay. Let's see about getting that little dinky hook back in, uh, screw back in the jib hook now. Hmm, boy, is that tiny. Whew. Probably should have got my reading glasses for this, huh? I might set that down. I'm trying to turn it backwards to get it seated a little bit. There we go. Be sure that you're not cross-threaded or anything like that. You don't want to have to deal with trying to replace the screw or re repair the threads in the hook. We do, we do need this tightened completely though. And I'll just try this again. Nice and, nice and firmly in there. Okay. So for putting this loop guard now on the back, we want to remember that the part number faces out at us. We'll slide it on there. And we'll line that up. And at least I get to work with a little tiny bit bigger screw. Huh? <laughs> that might go on my spring driver. Nope. Guess not. Oh, okay, let's try that. Hmm. Got it in there at least. Didn't get it started very far. So I'll finish it up. I just realized after I came back from washing these parts I didn't turn my other lights on. <laughs> so 
Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Now that I'm all done, huh? <laughs> okay, good and clean. Uh, before I go to put this back on, there's a couple things I want to do. Let's turn it so that the uh, hook point is up at the top. And let's go ahead and put the position finger up there. Now let's turn it a little. Do you, do you see those little teeth that I cleaned before? When they're installed, it looks, it sits like this on the shaft. And where those teeth are over here below the uh, jib hook screw, you actually want to, that's where you oil the hook race, is right in that area. So when you're oiling your machine, you want to put a drop of oil in there, run the machine, uh, you know, without it being threaded, and let that oil get around that hook race. Okay? And then I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to put the set screws get them started back in here because uh, it's going to be too hard for me to try and reach down in that little rectangular hole and it's dark in there and get these uh, screws started. At least if they're already started in there I can just tighten them up. It would be easier. When you put them back in though, you don't want to put them so far that they protrude into the hole area. You know, that you're going to be sliding onto the hook. You don't, you don't want them going that far in. Just a couple of turns to get them started in the thread, but not sticking into there. Okay. Let's look at this um, before I before I put the hook back on here. I was hoping to see run this now. So all I've got is here's the here's the hook, you know, uh, the hook shaft right here. I just want to run it and see if it's if it, if I have the noise or if the noise was something to do with the hook. Uh oh. I still hear it, even with the hook all the way off. I wonder if this hook shaft has some play here. Oh yeah, you hear that? Oh boy. I hear that. Okay. Well, let's get the let's get the hook back on here, and uh, we'll see what we can do about that. Maybe that's the noise. Is there's too much play in this hook shaft, and it's bouncing back and forth. Okay, on the hook shaft, there is a flat spot. Can you see that flat spot right there? I have it facing up right there. There's a flat spot uh, ground into the round hook shaft.
and that is for one of those two set screws to sit on so that we're sure the the hook doesn't slip and go out of time so when we put it back in we're just going to go ahead and turn it so that we're looking right down on that flat spot okay and then the screw that you put on the flat spot is the one closest to the hook point. So when we come back here and we say here is the hook point right right there mm -hmm. and this is the set screw closest to the hook point that's what's going to go on the flat spot so we're just going to hold it by that post and we're going to slip it on like that so that set screw is on the flat spot so let me see if I can go in there and get that tightened down on that flat spot once I get it snugged up on the flat spot, I can turn the hand wheel and rotate the shaft 180 degrees and I can get that other uh, I can get the other set screw tightened against the round part and then I can tighten them both down. Now let's see here. Look, I by by moving the shaft uh, towards the hook and moving the hook towards the shaft I've eliminated that play now there's a there's a little tiny small amount if you can hear that so what we want to be careful is that I don't push these two gears together too hard mesh them too hard so that it's it is hard to turn the uh, you know the shaft and run the run the motor and everything like that. I don't want it too hard. Okay. So we we'll just try and let's rotate it to where I get the other set screw to where I can see it there. Okay, and then the same same thing. Just push these two together and tighten that other set screw onto the round part of the shaft. I'm going to try my play here. I don't have any play. But what I want to be sure of is that there is no binding now. Okay. So. It, I'm turning it by hand. Just turning the hand wheel by hand. And it's turning very smooth. It doesn't feel like it's binding. It doesn't feel like it is resisting okay see that nice but I don't have this snapping back and forth now so I think maybe that was that clicking or hitting sound was the shaft moving back and forth mm-hmm it really sounded like it was down here, but it might have been the gears bouncing together for all I know and the sound just carried down the shaft. Or it was bouncing the back of the hook, the hub of the hook bouncing against the casting here in the bushing. Click, 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 click. So what I've got to do is tighten those hook screws up completely and then uh, uh, run the run the motor now and see if I still have okay I got this set screw tightened up rotate the 
that was the one on the uh, flat spot and this is the one on the round spot Oop. try to keep the shaft from spinning as I tighten that up any play Any binding feels smooth. You know, there's something about this. I thought this counterbalance was supposed to be up against the bushing. You can see the little bronze bushing pushing through there, and I thought it was supposed to be up closer to that. I don't know if there's a flat spot on this hook drive shaft. I don't remember, to be honest. So let me loosen that up pretty good. and kind of feels like there is a flat spot. Uh-huh. See if I can get that screw out enough to get it above the flat spot. There we go. So there is a flat spot. Uh, can you see it right there? Flat spot on the hook shaft for that screw to sit on. Right there. And it is lined up with the flat spot on this end makes sense so the one of the hook screws the bushing screw and this counterbalance screw should all kind of be lined up but see how it, it wasn't up here it was set back a little bit. There was a gap in there. So I want to put that back on the flat spot lined up right there. Tilt that up a little bit. Lined up with the screw on the hook and the flat spot but I want it to be over against the bushing like that. Not jammed, not crazy tight against it, but it was it was not there. That also may have been part of the noise situation. I gotta turn this to get my hand next to the camera and tighten that up. That's funny, I didn't notice that before. So it should be in line, again, with the screw on the hook. The screw that's on the flat spot of the hook. Those should be kind of lined all up together there. There you go. So you can't, can't turn it down. I can't turn it up. It's sitting, sitting on that hook. Uh, sitting on the shaft flat spot. Okay. Okay, still no binding. Mm -hmm. Lined up with the screw and lined up with the set screw that's closest to the point of the hook. Right there. So I got everything lined up now. Let's run it and see, did that, please, please get rid of that noise.
sure helped. It sure helped a lot. Now this is still spinning around. Oops, sorry. This is still flopping around because I don't have the uh, needle bar or the needle plate holding that up. So I'm getting some some noise of that. You know it helped, but it still sounds like I'm getting it. It still sounds like I'm getting a little bit disappointing, huh? I'll have to put the uh, needle plate back on there and and get it all back set up to see if I see what I got. I can't. I can't. I really thought that would do it. But I know my hook is clean and my thread scraps are out of the hook. I don't have play in the hook shaft anymore. I don't have any binding. Mm -hmm. Partial win. That's how you remove and clean and replace the hook. <laughs> and eliminate some of the noise. <laughs> okay. Thanks for uh, tuning in for that one. And I hope you come back and see the next video for Lala, the Singer Model 221 Featherweight.